Right friends, I have another video for you on spanning tree here and today we are going to discuss about pervalent spanning tree. I have two switches. This is the topology that I'm going to use and uh, we have two switches, no VLANs created. I'll just show you the basic config, show VLAN and we have just VLAN 1 and default VLANs being there. We just want to see if uh, any kind of spanning tree is running. For VLAN 1, the spanning tree is running. I have two interfaces connected between both the switches here. Both the switches, I have two. This is switch 1, it's switch 1 and switch 2 here. And we are running the per VLAN spanning tree here. So we can see that uh, we are the root here. Switch 1 is the root. Now root is elected based on uh, an election process. Election process will have something called a bridge ID. Bridge ID is a combination of uh, priority value as well as uh, the MAC address. So first it will try to compare based on the priority if the priorities are same which by default on two new switches if you did not configure anything is going to be same. The second parameter that comes after that is MAC address. So if the priorities are same the lowest MAC address wins. So either the lowest priority or the lowest MAC address is going to win. The default priority that you have is 327668 right but it becomes an extended priority because of adding the VLAN number here right this code extended VLAN ID basically and uh, it becomes by adding the VLAN number so if I have VLAN let's say 2 it's going to become uh, it will be 2 added at 68 so that should be 770 let's do that I'll create VLAN, VLAN 2 here and we'll see show VLAN now I turned on the debugs actually uh, just to see what kind of port state it goes through. So I have this and I'm going to be show spanning tree VLAN 2 is what we want to see. So you look at it here we have 770 as the priority Y because the default is 32768 plus the VLAN number 2. So that's how your extended system VLAN ID will be created very important to create a unique ID you add the system ID plus the VLAN number here All right now you see that I have turned on a small debugging here so we can see that it was showing us when it was coming up here listening right you see that listening here for this new VLAN and then for VLAN 2 it's listening and then you are learning here if you missed out on that I'm going to turn on another VLAN here and we will see what happens when I have created a new VLAN. So now it's creating a spanning tree instance. It's initiating the spanning tree instance here. And we have VLAN 3. It's going into listening state. We'll see what happens after this. Alright, so on this side, if I see I have three VLANs, show VLAN, and if I do show spanning tree also, I am seeing instance, three instances of spanning tree, show spanning tree, I see spanning tree running for VLAN 1, VLAN 2, and VLAN 3. But we have to see now, by going to second switch, how many spanning trees do we have? Only one spanning tree for VLAN 1, and how many VLANs do we have? We have only one VLAN. Right, so even if there is no VLAN exist on the other side, spanning tree is very local. If you have minimum one, you know, interface active into that VLAN, or if you have a trunk port up which has that VLAN allowing, which allows that VLAN, in that case, the spanning tree is going to be active, even if the VLAN doesn't exist on the other side. So here I have right now VLAN one, two, and three. One is by default. So I have spanning tree running for all that, but by default right now. I have only one. I'm going to create two and three here. So VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 is what we are creating here. And now I can see show spanning tree VLAN 2. So what's happening here is it's going into listening. Right, going into listening. Let me go back to, I think it should be now by then, it will be in learning. I go back here and we see that it's still learning and finally if everything is fine it should go into forwarding it's in forwarding now 
right? Now we see constantly that uh, the gigabit port number 24 is actually blocked, right? Because the election parameter that you have for a root port election, once you know the root ID is selected, as you see here, we are not the root. We'll go to the other switch to see if he's the root. And we also need to make sure that for VLAN, whatever VLAN number two or you know whatever VLAN we want here, in this case, let's say for VLAN two, what I really want is, I'm sorry, interface. I want uh, one of the, this uh, gigabit 24 sh should be the, you know, the port which should be in forwarding. I don't want it to be blocked. I want this port to be blocked, right? So I will go interface gigabit 0 23 there are two ways either you reduce the cost of this or increase the cost of the upper one so I'm going to increase the cost spanning tree cost now I can also say spanning tree VLAN and just for VLAN and I want to say cost so that's that's actually is going to only impact VLAN 2 right if I just say cost it's going to impact all VLANs so I'll just say for VLAN 2 I want this port number 24 to be preferred so that I'm going to set a port cost of 30 and then I say show spanning tree VLAN 2 see what happens this is in forwarding and this guy is blocked right so between two switches when this switch is elected as root right and the switches have to decide which port has to be root port a root port is one which leads toward the root and root port never has the root a root bridge never has the root ports it has always the designated forwarding ports right so the root port here how it will be decided it is decided always based on the lowest number so 23 was selected by default because the port number was lowest and that's the reason it was elected right